Hi, this is Tudor Nick B, and this is Proverbs 163. Proverb today is time and tide wait for no man. Okay, let's look at the note here. Uh, you may also possibly hear this proverb as time and tide stay for no man, or you may hear it as time and tide tarry for no man, or a little bit of an old use. Tarry means to stay longer or dwaddle or you know, kind of waste too much time. Okay, let's continue. This proverb is often used as a warning uh, that time will not wait for you. Uh, you only have so much time to make decisions and get important things done. Uh, if you wait too long or procrastinate, opportunities may be lost. Uh, it could also be used to suggest that human events and behavior uh, cannot stop time or cannot change time. Okay, let's continue. Um, the earliest known sighting comes from around 1225, and I think Chaucer then used it in the 1300s too. But they say that uh, the time and tide, the original, the original quote, time and tide, the original tide was not actually for the sea tide. The original tide had to do with time. So let's go over this. At that time, the word tide also meant time as like in a season, like and nowadays we, around Christmas, we always hear the word Yuletide. You know, I always wondered, Yuletide, where did that come from? But the, the tide in Yuletide actually refers to time or like a season, like the Christmas season. Um, okay, so uh, as in a season or special period, uh, the term Yuletide, good tidings, we often say that, that's also in Christmas songs, you know, like, you know, wishing somebody good times. Mm-hmm. Tides were also used uh, in the days of sundials, you know, the early days, like, you know, around 1000, 1100, 1200, around this time. Um, yeah, and each was considered to be three hours. I think originally when they were using time back then, because they didn't have watches yet. Uh, and of course, no electricity. So they were using sundials. And I think they also paid attention to the tide coming in and out in a way of judging times too. So there is a little bit of a connection there. Um, they were also used for days. They were considered to be three hours. So a tide was, was three hours and the working day was supposedly broken into four tides. So that's why we had, there, there used to be words like eve tide, eve, even tide, meaning like the evening tide or the noon tide, you know, around 12 o'clock. Uh, something like that. So it really did relate to to time at that time. But some later think this use could also be related to to tides in a way, due to another story uh, from the story of King Canute. Uh, he lived from 995 to 1035 AD, uh, and he was the king of what is our modern day England, Denmark, and Norway. That's kind of interesting. Um, according to the story, the king tried uh, to teach his subjects uh, that even a king has limited power, you know, um, and he did this actually by, uh, by commanding the sea and the tides to stop. So now he knew the sea and the tides will not listen to him, but this was his way of teaching them that, you know, even a king only has so much power. Uh, so he wasn't doing, doing it in an arrogant way. He was doing it in a way to actually teach that. Okay, good. All right. Uh, but anyway, so this is, this is some of the origins of where it comes from. But, you know, either way, it really means it's always used as a warning that, you know, time is limited. You, you have to act. You have to make up your decision and do things. All right, so let's look at a couple of examples here. Um, you need to decide if you are going to do this or not, don't wait too long, uh, time and tide wait for no man. Okay, that's one way we might use it. Or the second one here, we always believe in addressing issues right away, time and tide waits for no man. Okay, anyway, this is the way we might use it. Uh, I hope you got it, I hope it was clear. Thank you for your time, bye-bye.